The grounds on which many people are standing to justify T.B. Joshua's holiness is wrong. It's a sinking ground. How could you say he's a man of God just because he, was, he did good works? Just because he fed the poor? Evildoers also fed the poor. So you know a lot of things have been said today. The trending news is T.B. Joshua. Uh, as they will call him, Prophet T.B. Joshua. It's been the trending news and a lot of things are happening. People are talking on YouTube, on Facebook, on Twitter. People are saying all kind of stuff. There are a lot of opinions. Those who are defending him, those who are against him. Um, honestly, I've been observing. There are a couple pages that I follow who talk about T.P. Joshua. And um, even on Twitter, on, on, on YouTube. It bothers me. Because when I look at those who are defending him, you know, I, I tried my possible best to, to be logical, to give a fair chance, to know why they are defending T.B. Joshua. And I'm to my greatest surprise, most of the people who are defending T.B. Joshua are defending him on the grounds of benevolence, on the grounds of charity, on the grounds of generosity. I'm like, why? I don't understand it. How could you defend somebody because they, they were generous? Because they helped you? Because they built house for you? Because they bought cars for you? Because they did all kind of good things for you? You are defending the person and telling the other person that he may have wronged to hush, don't say anything. Like, it, it, really, it really baffles me. I just can stomach it. I saw a lot of pages who are saying, hey, T.B. Joshua paid for my tuition fee from when I was in primary school to university. So he was a good man. He, he was a man of God. And this one said, he built a house for me. He was a man of God. This one said, he took care of me. He was a man of God. So I'm like, so all of you are saying that he was a man of God only because of his generosity, only because of his benevolence. You don't know how to separate benevolence from holiness. You don't know how to separate generosity, charity from Christ-likeness. So you're telling me that somebody who helps you, somebody who, 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 who was generous to you, took care of you, is a person of God. Because they gave you things, because they blessed your life, so that must be from God. That person must be from God. This really baffled me because something Martin Luther said, you know, when he was going back and forth with the, with the Catholic, he said, good works does not make a good man, but a good man does good works. Listen carefully. Evil works does not make a wicked man. But a wicked man does evil works. This is the conclusion of everything. Because someone does good works, that doesn't mean they're from God. Because someone does evil works, that doesn't mean they're from devil. What you have to understand now is you have to look into it and see what is the reason why this person is doing all these good things. What is the motive behind their deeds? What is the motive behind their evil works? What is the motive behind their good works? Because I could choose to do good good to you just to buy your silence. So no matter what I do, you will support me. No matter what I say, you will support me. It's just not adding up to me. I want to hear people say he was a man of God because he lived a holy life. No man can see God without being holy. All I'm hearing was, hey, he he did good for me. He blessed my life. He trained me in school. He took care of me. Are you saying because he took care of you, the person that was treated bad should hush their mouth? Come on, Africans. Come on, Nigerians. Especially my Nigerian people. I don't know what is wrong with you. What is wrong with my people? 
know how to separate good works from holiness. People are saying that so because someone does good works, automatically that person is a holy person. That person is Christ-like. Don't get me wrong. A Christ-like disciple does good works. A Christ-like disciple will do good works. But good works cannot be used to justify or to define holiness, to define Christ-likeness. It can't be used to define piety. Good works cannot be used to define godliness. So you have to separate. Separate these things. All the people who are saying T.B. Joshua who was a man of God, T.B. Joshua was the man of days, you know, he, he, he came from God. You are saying this because you know, he helped you, because he gave you money, because he, he trained you, he paid your tuition fee. All of this are good. Remember, I heard somebody was saying that they say, Pablo Escobar did a lot of good works. Pablo Escobar, the drug man from Colombia, who was eventually killed. The man did a lot of good works. Even to this day, there are people in Colombia who still goes to his graveside and, and worship him because he, he helped them, because he built house for them. But the level, the gravity of crime that man committed, the lives that he destroyed at numbers, the amount of benevolence that emanated from him. So because someone did good works, that doesn't mean they are, they are from God. The devil also does good works. The devil told Jesus, if you bow and worship me, I will give you everything. Giving Jesus everything could be perceived as good works. But the motive behind the devil's benevolence wasn't from God. So I'm just fed up hearing people saying, T.B. Joshua was a man of God because he, he trained me from primary education to university level. I'm just fed up hearing that. Was he a holy man? These whole things that were, that were leveled against him, did he commit them? Because you cannot tell the people, these victims, let's say he committed them indeed. You cannot tell these victims to shut their mouth. Because T.B. Joshua helped you. Because T.B. Joshua paid your tuition. So you're telling the victims, hush your mouth and then say anything. T.B. Joshua was a good man. He helped me. Oh, he helped you, but he did evil. He committed evil. He took advantage of other people. Let him speak. Let him come out and speak. You cannot tell the people to hush their mouth. Oh, you are accusing the man of God. Um, he was a good man. He trained me when I was in school. He built a house. He gave us food. He gave us money. So you need to shut your mouth. That is not right. If I choose to be good to you and be bad and evil to another person, that doesn't make me a good person. Because I could choose to help you and, and I could choose to be a murderer. So when you come out and say, he was a good man, leave him alone. And when this person comes out and say, hey, he killed my friend, he killed my family member, he killed my loved one. And you are saying, don't say that. He was a good man. Because you are judging from your own perspective and all you are judging on, on, on the grounds of my good works. It's not supposed to be so. Good works does not make a good man. But a good man does good works. Evil works does not make an evil man. But an evil man does evil works. So you cannot justify or define somebody's holiness based on benevolence, based on good works, based on charity, whatever you call it separate holiness from benevolence this is exactly why they are taking advantage of us in nigeria because when it's time for for election these politicians will come and do a lot of good works oh he was a good works a short term short term good works then they buy your vote when they get up there they forget you you will suffer for four years just because you you enjoyed the little good works that they did in a short space of time that you will have to suffer for the rest of their tenure. Use your brain. Read the word of God for yourself. Read the word of God. Most people don't even read the Bible. They just 
go by what the pastor says to them. They just go by what, 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 what comes out from the pulpit, what the pastor is giving them. The word of God is for everybody to read. It's very accessible. You can get it on your phone. You can get it, a hard copy of it. Read the word of God yourself. For those who say, oh, T.B. Joshua prophesied, there's no way, you know, he could be prophesying accurately if he wasn't a man of God. Who said that? That's why you have to read the Bible. Devil also can prophesy. Devil also can give accurate prophecy. So because the prophecy was real, or because the prophecy came to pass, does not mean that they are from God. No, I'm not speaking against T.B. Joshua, but I'm saying... The grounds on which many people are standing to justify T.B. Joshua's holiness is wrong. It's a sinking ground. How could you say he's a man of God just because he, was, he did good works? Just because he fed the poor? Evildoers also fed the poor. So it is really, 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 really disturbing to see that a lot of us and not reading the Bible for ourselves, a lot of us, you know, automatically calls you holy just because you, you are doing good works. Remember, just have this in your, at the back of your mind. Good works does not make a good man, but a good man does good works. Evil works does not make a wicked man, but a wicked man does evil works. Read the Bible for yourself and your life will change. God bless you. See you next time.